Angus asked 12 of his best staff whether they wanted to help him push the boat out again. And just days after his first company closed its doors, those same staff joined Angus and launched the new company at 42 Bedford Row in inner city Christchurch. Angus didn't hold a grudge against those who had put him into receivership. Instead, he brought them onto his side and retained them as advisors. Again, fate intervened. Angus was on the Wahini passenger ship when it struck a reef and floundered in Wellington Harbour, tantalisingly close to safety. Factory staff listened to the radio half an island away with bated breath for news of their boss. 610 passengers were on board. Already, casualties had been reported. Finally, a phone call came through. Angus had survived, still clutching vital business contracts, which he took to the post office the very next day. Having survived the worst shipwreck in New Zealand history, one that cost 51 of his fellow travellers their lives, Angus now understood how much the business meant to him. Nothing would sway him from seeing his business survive. But on a personal level, Angus would never travel by ship again. To quote, the last one I was on sank. The space race to put the first man on the moon would open new doors for Angus Tate's next venture. A lot of effort was put into developing RF transistors to provide astronauts with suitable radio communications, which in turn led Tate to become the first company in Australasia to build the all-transistor mobile radio. From there, Tate Electronics flourished. During the 1970s, the Tate Miniphone boosted sales and took Tate to the top of the New Zealand market. By the end of the 1970s, Angus realised his ambitions to begin exporting worldwide, first to the United Kingdom. In the next 20 years, Angus also steered exports to the USA and Australia, where offices were also established. The growing success of Tate Electronics was highlighted in 1994 when the company won the New Zealand Governor-General's Supreme Award for Exporter of the Year for the second time. While the following year, the Queen of England toured the company's facilities while on a royal visit.